channel and technically we should be live now. <laughs> hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you've been having a good day so far. Uh, this is a, a short tutorial that I'm doing live through Google Plus Hangouts and it's something I haven't done before but I hope should be reasonably easy to follow along and reasonably good quality in uh, picture quality and I hope you can hear me fine. So this is, we've got Kane here which is one of my good friends from Australia. Hey Kane. Hey. How's it going man? Yeah, good. Good, good. Well, thanks for being here for like moral support. That's and right. uh, if, uh, if you've got any good ideas out of the um, the tutorial, Kane, please feel free, to, feel free to step in. So the purpose of this video that I'm making today is to show you guys how I do YouTube um, thumbnails. And uh, I find thumbnails are a really good way of getting people to um, work out what your content's about from a, from a first glance. And uh, people can make their decision on whether your video is worth watching from the get-go just by looking at your picture and associating it with its title. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you my screen and I'm going to be showing you how I work with Final Cut Pro 10 as well as a whole bunch of other stuff um, to... Um, Whoa, this is like inception <laughs> in my screen share right now. So I'm going to show you how to use Final Cut Pro 10 to export your thumbnail and uh, process your thumbnail within Photoshop. So what I usually, when I'm um, usually rendering out my video in Final Cut Pro 10, I can sometimes be sitting for like 20 to 30 minutes just waiting for the render to complete. So this is a really good time to go ahead and start writing my title and writing my description and my tags and where I'm going to share my video and um, also what's important is to think about what, what kind of thumbnail I'm going to be using. So this is a video that I've just recently posted onto my channel where it's a, it's a bit of a mo an internal monologue and a, like a diary entry to my cat Chucky. And so I don't want to give too much away in my thumbnail, um, but I still want to want to share something that's going to give a it's going to share a um, a an interest to the audience. So I use this one here because it doesn't it doesn't tell tell too much about the story, but it shows my cat using my tie and me having a, a very sad face. So I thought this might be a really good uh, thumbnail to use. So what I can do is I can um, go into my shared options over here, um, and I'll share that as an as an image. Save my current frame. And I'll just save this current frame onto my desktop as a JPEG. This is a, um, a 720p document, as you can see down over here. It's a 1280 by 720p document. Um, just just for the time being, Kane, what does this um, the screen sharing look like looking like for you so far? Uh, it seems all right, but I was just looking at the um, actual stream. Yeah. And you can make it out, but it's not the best of quality. It's not the best of quality. Yeah. Okay, well, may, that might be New Zealand's internet to blame there, but we can. Um, I'll keep powering on, and uh, you guys can at least see the workflow that I take for making my thumbnails, and um, grab some inspiration for that for your own process. Thanks very much, bro. Um, I'm gonna going to export this as a uh, TIFF file and uh, scale my image to preserve aspect ratio, and just pop it onto my desktop. So I'll just pop it onto my desktop, and it'll be called Valentine's Clip. Um, frame grab. Boom, it's on my desktop. Okay, and then I'm going to launch Photoshop. Now, to many of you out there um, in the YouTube New Zealand page, or anyone else who's interested, you can actually go onto the, the Adobe website. I'll pull it up for you really quickly. And you can um, find out how to get free downloads of the full CS2 suite from Adobe. So I'll just head over to the adobe.com website. I'm going to hit downloads when it comes up. Here we go, download, and I'm going to do a search for uh, CS2. Hmm, I'd like to go to download, please. Yeah. All right, let's have a look. CS2, CS2 download. And it should be the first option that comes up. Now, this is a move that Adobe has gone ahead um, very willingly um, to try and overcome any licensing issues that people have experienced with CS2. So whether you're on a Mac or Windows, it is possible to use the full Creative 2 suite. Uh, notably, they've got Photoshop CS2, After Effects, Premiere Pro, Audition 3, which is freaking amazing software. This is like Audition is probably my favorite um, piece of software in the whole package, although it is only available for Windows. But if you look down the bottom here, they do have Photoshop CS2 available for both, both Mac and Windows. And this will work on all versions of Windows, to my understanding, and um, most older versions of Mac. If you are running Lion or Mountain Lion, unfortunately, I don't believe that this will be working for you. But uh, this is something very good for you guys who are running Windows. So um, you can get Photoshop for free. If you have Photoshop already, then don't bother about this. Go ahead and launch your own Photoshop application. 
I'm going to open up my thumbnail and uh, let's pretty up our thumbnail or our frame grab that we just produced earlier and put some text on it and make it more uh, dynamic and eye-catching for our viewers um, on YouTube. So I'm going to open up my frame grab here. Boom, there it is. And let's put some text on here. I've actually given um, my video the title of... I'm trying to remember, remember off the top, top of my head now. My video is called uh, Dear Chucky, I'm in Love. So maybe I'll just use the words Dear Chucky. Now, for you who aren't too, in, too familiar with Photoshop, I've just used a tool on my left-hand side here. It's got a big T with a little arrow pointing to the bottom um, right, and that's my text tool. So anywhere I click on top of my picture, it's going to be creating text on top of my picture. Um, now, what I do is I prefer to use the, the font Myriad Pro. It comes with most installations of Photoshop. I can't imagine any installation of Photoshop that wouldn't have it. So I use Myriad Pro, which you can select from the drop-down up the top here. I also select Bold as its font type or its, um, its weight, as well as uh, using Strong, which is the, um, the pixel rendering or the, the anti-aliasing uh, algorithm that it uses to make your, sh your text crisp or sharp or smooth, etc. So I've, um, you can also change the size of your text here. Oh, I'm just going to go back into my text tool. You can also just use the keyboard shortcut T to enable your text mode. Uh, if I highlight all of my text, you've also got the, um, the big T and the little T as well as the point size for your, um, your text. And you can just click and drag on the T and just seamlessly change the size of your text, which is pretty sweet, eh? So I'm going to, I'm going to um, move my text a bit to the top left, and I'll tell you why. A top right, my apologies. I'm going to make my text have gone two lines and format the text by going to Window and then down to Character and format my text so that it's weighted towards the right. And I'm going to close that and pop it here in the top right. Um, I haven't exactly explained why I use text in my thumbnails. Um, I prefer to use text in my thumbnails just because um, if the title is going to be chopped off because your title is long, then you can just like visually tell a picture and tell a story about what your video is about just boom in one go in the one thumbnail. And your thumbnail really truly does stand out if it's got text on it because um, customizable thumbnails do jump out and um, when you do share this on Facebook or if you share this on Google+, uh, Facebook will favor it because it, it makes like a big thumbnail um, or even if you, fav if you feature it on your YouTube channel, the big thumbnail will have your text on there and instead of looking at the picture and the text, um, and I know that sounds super lazy, but by looking at the picture with the text on it, you're effectively telling a story about what your video is about straight away and boom, will, people will be eager, eager to um, click on it and watch it. So that's my reasoning behind using text on my thumbnails. You might have a personal approach not to. That's totally fine. There's no correct way of doing your thumbnails, um, which is why I encourage you to have a play around and try some different things. So what I've done there, I've just changed the um, line spacing between the two lines of text. And let's uh, put a drop shadow onto my text here. So this is, in Photoshop, you work with layers. Um, this is something that can be quite tricky to get your head around if you've never used Photoshop before. But on the basic premise here, we've got a very simple document. I've got my background, which is the picture of me crying with my cat and the tie. And I've also got my text here. To go back to why I put my text in the top right, I put it there because um, YouTube does tend to have a time um, number, like a number representing how many minutes and how many seconds my um, video is going to be running for. And for that reason, I prefer to put it up in the top right so that my text doesn't interfere with what window, what YouTube puts on top of my thumbnail. And also, Chucky is quite a feature of my video, so I might even just drag my text down. Whoop, I'll just select my text layer. Um, hmm. See, I'm having a bit of a clash here with my my thumbnail. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my resize tool, which can easily be um, enabled by going Command T, or if you're in Windows, Control T. I'm going to zoom out using my Control or Command uh, plus and minus keys to zoom in and out. And I'm just going to drag my thumbnail so that um, I, me and Chucky, take up more of the thumbnail and remove this empty space here. To drag and resize proportionately, I'm going to push and hold Shift and on the top left corner, I'm going to drag. And so that's going to keep my whole thumbnail in proportion, which is pretty sweet.
So I'm just going to have a bit of a jimmy around to make sure that me and Chucky are the focus of the thumbnail and that I can have, at least have some space for my text. So I'm going to apply the transformation, apply, and boom. So this is a, um, a 720p document, and even though I've just lost, effectively lost quality by creating my thumbnail and stretching it out, um, the size that YouTube generally shows it to people is a quality much less than 720p, usually something like about 360p, so the, the, the thumbnail will still appear, appear sharp to people. All right, I'm going to select my text. I, I'm happy with its location right here. I'm going to go ahead and do a drop shadow. So I'm going to uh, double click on the empty space next to my text over here by my layer and open up my layer styles. And Photoshop CS6 drop shadows down at the bottom. But from memory, I think drop shadow is an option towards the top of the list here. So I'm going to put a tick box by drop shadow. And uh, the reason why I'm using a drop shadow in the first place is just simply so that I can um, have some weight behind the text because the white text when the pic when the thumbnail is really small on screen can sometimes blend into the picture. So I'm going to really I'm going to increase the opacity. I'm going to change the size of my thumbnail just so that it's there but not overpowering. I think that's about right. But we can jimmy around with that very soon. So I'm happy with that drop shadow just for now. And just um, for the purpose of being able to get an idea of what it'll look like on YouTube, I'm going to zoom the heck out and make it really small so that I'm imagining that it's on YouTube. And that looks about right. The, the text is reasonably easy to see. Um, I hope that the live stream that I'm doing for you now is representative of, uh, the, the quality is representative for you as I see it now. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm really going to make the colors in the background more punchy. Um, thumbnails with really strong colors, like with you know strong white or strong black and strong colors, really jump out in amongst all the other ones that might have a faded color. So to do that, I'm going to select my background layer. I'm going to go down towards um, Image and Adjustments, and then go to Levels. This is one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. No, not Devils, my apologies. I'm going to go to Adjustments and, oh man, Curves, here we go. It's actually Command M, and I usually use keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop, but it's um, I know other people learn in different ways. So image adjustments and then curves. This is a representation of where all the pixels and this brightness um, and the the amount of pixels sit within your picture. So this is a reasonably grey image in that a lot of my pixels kind of sit in the middle, and then the, there are less pixels that are very white, and there are less pixels that are very black. So let's um, change that by perhaps increasing the brightness and increasing the darkness. And there you can see my picture now. I'm just going to zoom in on my picture so you can see that better because it is a very small picture I'm sure on your screen. Here we go. It's a much greater contrast in my image and uh, to an extent can look a bit more cinematic which um, people will, will associate with higher quality for the video. So that's a very good thing for you as well. So let's, um, let's zoom out of that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I might actually make my text um, uh, a bit bigger actually. So I'm going to text, select my text layer, highlight all of my text, and, in, and increase the size of the text. Delete the T, and perhaps drag this down just a little bit, but leave at least like the bottom sixth or bottom fifth of your frame available for the YouTube um, time or duration. So that's literally how I go about and make my thumbnails. I'm going to go ahead and save that and make sure that I've got some ways that um, I can refer to it if I want to change it in future. So go ahead and save it as a Photoshop format file with its layers in the sRGB um, color space. And I'm just going to make, just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll make a folder called YouTube Thumbnails on my desktop with um, two M's and no B, just for your grammar and spelling pleasure. Uh, and I'm going to uh, save that in YouTube thumbnails. Boom. And maximize capabil compatibility. Boom. All right, that's really done. I'm going to go save it again. I'm going to go save as. And this time I'm going to save it as a PNG format. Generally, when you're doing thumbnails and icons, the internet does a favor PNGs, uh, usually for motion, uh, motion bleh, usually for graphical um, objects, which I guess this is because it's got text on a photograph and that'll um, help preserve the clarity of that text better. So I'm going to go ahead and save that as a PNG and I usually like to just put the name PNG within my file name. Make sure the format is PNG and hit save. Okay. 
Now, this is just um, by chance a video that I haven't put a thumbnail on. So um, if you have a look on my desktop, oopsie daisy, have a look at my desktop. There's my thumbnail sitting in YouTube thumbnails, and there's my my PNG file, which um, is looking spiffy-ish. It's looking all right. Just to double check, make sure your thumbnail is less than um, than two megabytes, which this one way overblows. So I'm going to go back and make my thumbnail a little bit smaller, actually, um, or have greater compression on my, on my PNG. So I'm glad I checked that out. Let's go back to my original and go save as and try and save that again with a higher compression. Hmm, I'm going to change the size of my my entire picture. So to do that, I'm going to go option command I or if you're if you're in Windows it's a different keyboard shortcut, but I'm going to go image size and change the image size to about hmm, let's change this to 700 pixels um, across and 394 down. So it's substantially smaller now. I'm now looking at it 100%, which is still really good quality. Um, so let's save that again as a PNG. Don't save it as a PSD because you'll lose the um, the work that you've just done with the re before the resize. Go save, replace the PNG you've created. Okay, let's go back to my desktop and go have a look at that thumbnail and make sure it's below two mega two megabytes. Boom, 1.5 megabytes just in. That's good. All right, I'm going to close Photoshop, and I'm not going to save it because I don't want to delete the work that I did before the, the image resize. And there's you guys and, and uh, trippy Inception appeal. All right, I'm going to make a new tab. Go to my YouTube account, and um, let's put that new thumbnail in. Video manager. And here's my recent video here. Dear Chucky, I'm in love, Valentine's 2013. I'm going to hit edit and just plonk my new thumbnail right in there. Customize thumbnail, YouTube thumbnails, use the PNG because we labeled it as that earlier. Go open. Now this is a one and a half megabyte file and I am here in New Zealand. Woe is me, my internet is not very fast. So it might take about a good 10 to 15 seconds to upload that 1.5 megabyte file. Hurrah! as well as me doing a live broadcast. But if you guys haven't seen up, check my channel. I'm on Strugs Not Drugs. Um, I post, sometimes I post tutorials and I do um, travel videos as well as general vlogs and I'm wanting to branch into fun skits, which can be fun. So there you go. There's, the, there's what the thumbnail is going to look like on YouTube. It's got punchy color. You can read the text easily, clearly. It's got an odd situation with a guy on a pink shirt crying on the floor with a cat sniffing his tie, it seems. What the heck is that all about? I'm going to go click on that. And that's the appeal that you would hope people would have, or the approach people would have with your video. So I encourage you guys to go ahead and experiment with um, creating thumbnails in Photoshop. I find it's the, the one of the easiest ways to, to be, be able to create your thumbnail and um, have you, give you a lot of flexibility. But if you have any questions about how to download Photoshop, you're welcome to come into Photoshop, uh, onto the... Um, the YouTube New Zealand Facebook group and ask questions there. Otherwise, I'm sure there'll be other people out there who've also had experience downloading Adobe Photoshop CS2 from the Adobe shop, from the Adobe um, blah, 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 website. So guys, thank you so much for watching. That's how you make a, um, a reasonably quick and simple uh, thumbnail while you're waiting for your video to render or upload or process on YouTube. Um, and helps your video be more appealing to people at the get-go. Hope this has been enjoyable for you. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, let me know if you'd like to see more tutorials much like this, and would like to join in in future Hangouts and uh, ask questions in return. Is there anything, before I go, Kane, is there anything that you think might jump out that people might want to want to question um, about Photoshop? No, no, I was going to say that you had to leave it under the two megabyte limit, but you already said that before. Choice. Yeah, I just made that. Hey, just I just just got under the two megabyte limit, so it can be really gutting if you've got a, an awesome video or awesome thumbnail and you just managed to um, fall outside that two megabytes. So, I mean, we managed to make that happen. So, thank you once again for um, for watching. If you like, subscribe to Strokes Not Drugs as well as Kane, who's got the channel The Parallax. Whoop whoop. Um, and uh, follow our respective Twitter as well, which is um, I'll put in the, the description down below on this video uh, when it's made public on YouTube. So thank you once again, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.